Hi everyone, how are you? Deb Miller again. I just wanted to touch base with you this week. This week's a very important week since it's our last week. So we are wrapping up things. First and foremost, I did get some messages in regards to when is your last class because there's some confusion. On the school calendar, it shows that um, the 15th is the last part of session one. However, that is with Tuesday, Thursday group as well because they're in there. So the 15th is the last day of session one. However, we only have 15 classes in every class. So if you count our classes and when we began and when we structured everything, our 15th class will fall on January, Wednesday, January 13th and that is when your presentations are due. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about your papers and a little bit about your presentations. I'm going to give you two separate videos so I don't have these videos going 25, 30 minutes. So I just wanted to touch base on that first. So again, for this class, your last class will be the 13th of January, next Wednesday, so we have exactly one week and that will be your presentations due. Monday, your papers are due. So they're in the same portion, they're in the sales presentation. Your press kits, again, would I think I've talked about it in the past, but your press kits typically would be something that we would display here, but because we are all online, you guys don't have that opportunity. So I'm looking at them as we go along and grading them in the system as we go along. You don't have to submit anything additionally for them, just your papers and your presentations. So at first, I want to walk through a rubric. I had to change up my rubric because if you look at the rubric for the project, it actually talks about things like dressing professionally and being business professional and things like that. And you have five to seven minutes in length. Well, if you're not up here actually physically presenting and it's not required that you do, but if you're not up here physically presenting five to seven minutes really means not much at all other than the content on your slides. So I want to be very clear about what I'm looking for for the actual sales presentation. It could be on Google Slides. It can be on a PowerPoint. It absolutely only matters to you in regards to that other than I have to have access to open it up and to look at it. Um, so I do look at it in regards to if it takes me 35 minutes to get through all the content and read all the content, then that would really count to my five to seven minutes, which should mean that it's a very brief PowerPoint in general. I want to really know that you understand and have researched pretty well the product that you chose. Um, I want to talk about persuasive techniques. And again, if you look at today's PowerPoint, for today's session for class session it'll explain those as well as the videos um, professionalism does it look professional so again I'm gonna get down to the rubric in a little bit of exactly what I mean by those things but I want to make sure because in our class here obviously we are all of us are online so I, I put it in notation here that I would like you to be very clear about it says please note that since we are fully online for this class and everyone has different schedules we will not be presenting live. What that means is we won't be signing on Zoom and literally presenting for each other because you all have different hours and you have different things going on at that time. So this means that you need to follow the rubric below and I'll show you that really quickly. And I need it in, I'm gonna give you the entire class session to finish it up on Wednesday. So it will not be due Wednesday the 13th until 10 p.m. It has to be turned in that. That is essentially your final exam. So please don't let this one go over. Your class literally ends on Wednesday night. Therefore, if you turn this in four or five days later without any communication, there's gonna be a problem and you're probably not gonna make it through the class. So I need you to be very clear that this due date is very important. Um, this is essentially your final project, final exam of the entire course. So it also says here, what I want to cover here is that you will be given extra credit if you present the PowerPoint via video recording, PowerPoint's voiceover option. Again, you can add voice clips to every single PowerPoint. 
or YouTube yourself. Again, what I do here, I literally record these videos on my phone and then I upload them to YouTube. Uh, again, a lot of problems with file sizes when we have large videos, but YouTube is my only platform that I can do that easily with. So uh, it is not mandatory. Let me be very clear. None of this is mandatory. I will simply give you 20, and I mean 20 extra points out of 90 if you voice over, you can video record yourself and just send it. Um, whatever's easiest for you, whatever platform you feel comfortable with. I will also share videos online from YouTube showing you how to do a voiceover in PowerPoint. Um, so I will give you those tools, but it is not necessary for this. Again, we just had to change being fully online. So here's my rubric, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I am quite literally walking you through what I need for each of these slides. So at first I need a title slide. I need something that basically tells me who you are. Yeah, you don't go into a sales presentation. This is not a information presentation where you're just sharing information. This is a sales pitch eventual, or essentially. So, if you've ever heard of the term elevator pitch, if you've ever watched Shark Tank, I've got some Shark Tank videos, worst and best ones on um, today's sales presentation. But if you've ever watched, it's that, that a 30 second elevator pitch is essentially what we talk about in sales because of the fact that you only have so much time to grab a customer's attention. And you have to make it count. It's kind of like the executive summary in a marketing plan. You've only got so much time to grab their attention and tell them what you want them to um, take away from what exactly you have to say. So give me a title slide that tells me who you are. You have to introduce yourself to your customer. The very first thing before you get into, this is my product and this is what I'm going to sell. The very first thing that every sales pitch should have is what we call in marketing a value proposition and hopefully you already know what that is but if not I'll explain it a little bit more a value proposition is a fulfillment of a need or a want of your customer and remember you're selling business to business so your customer isn't the end user your customer is a business that is selling to the end user so you have to fulfill. There's a want or a need, or maybe there's not distribution of a particular product in your area, and you're looking to fill that need. That is your drama portion of the sales. What I mean by that is um, you can legitimately make this your, your pitch. Uh, if I was selling like gluten-free, casein-free food in the area, which 15 years ago, it wasn't very prevalent in our area, my daughter was GFCF for a while and there was very few offerings. The only place that actually offered GFCF food was Wegmans. So I had to go there and I had to buy their products. But if I was making that pitch, I'd be like, you know, does your, is your child, is your child in need or are you in need of, you know, you ever find yourself needing gluten-free products and nobody sells them in the area, you're gonna make this big dramified um, reason why you need or want a particular product. And here you are going to bring that product to the area. Here you are, you can fulfill that want or need. That's what we call value prop in marketing. We have a need or a want and with our product, we can fulfill that need or want. So that's a drama moment. So that should be right after your name because in sales, we've got so much time to reach that customer that in the middle, we have what's called a lull. We have, they kind of tend to drop off in a nice way, not drop over, but they drop off in their attention span. So right at the beginning, we have that moment to capture their interest then we kind of lose them in the middle a little bit. That's where we put our details and our, our product offering and um, all the details and the benefits of our product and things like that. And then at the end, we actually have our call to action, which we'll get to. So very first one is tell me who you are. Produce that value prop. Make it as dramatic as you want. Um, then we're going to talk about your product selection. 
how your product, obviously, if we talk about who you are, if we talk about that need there, and now, bam, we have this product, and this product will fulfill your need. So we've met that value prop. Tell me a little bit about information about the actual company itself that makes that product, the who you are, who you are as a company. Tell me a little bit. Again, this is not meant to cover the exact same material that is in your paper. This is meant to be a short and condensed presentation version. So, you know, just tell me, hey, you know, our company has been in business for 42 years. Um, we are the pioneers and experts in this field. And this is why you should trust us. Boom, boom, boom. Include lots of pictures. It's a PowerPoint presentation or a Google Slides presentation. So there should be, again, most marketing when it comes to um, presentations is a very visual thing. So the colors of your product, the colors of your entire uh, marketing press kit materials should coordinate with the colors of your presentation. You should include, again, pictures of your products, explain any services that come along with that product. What I mean by that is we talked um, probably a class or two ago about um, warranties. What kind of backups do we have? Does it have, does your product have a guarantee? Does it have maintenance? Does it have, does it need to come in? I know that I purchased my rings and stuff like that from K's. Part of uh, purchase of my rings is that I can bring them into any K store and have them cleaned and have them examined to see if there's any you know defects and anything's happening to it so that I don't lose a diamond or I don't lose a stone along the way. So that's part of the product of me purchasing the product. It's part of their services that they offer as well. So tell me about anything that you've got going on about warranties, your maintenance, uh, routine, things like that, guarantees, etc. What happens, you can also put in this section and maybe it's a little helpful, uh, what happens for returns? Um, how you handle returns as a company. Uh, persuasive techniques, you're selling here. You are trying to persuade somebody to buy your product. Why you, tell us why you are number one and why we should buy, buy that product with your company versus your competitor. Again, not too deep here because this is just the presentation portion of it. Most of that stuff you're gonna cover in detail in your paper. And then we have what is called a call to action. A call to action you should have learned in your previous classes. Sorry, I'm just gonna turn around here so I can scroll up here real quick. Um, a call to action is typically one thing. A call to action is what I want them to do now. I've gone on to explain the product that I'm, and the service that is gonna fulfill the value proposition. I have gone on to tell them about my product and now I want them to do one thing. We learn in marketing that if we ask people to come on down to the store, to call us, to visit our website, if we give them multiple options, they choose no options. That's very important in marketing. We can't give them multiple call to actions. So every piece of your press kit and or your sales presentation should have one particular call to action. The only one that might have multiples on them is your business card because your business card is meant to actually encapsulate you know, your, your name, your address, your email, uh, your website, things like that. But the rest of them are one call to action. So simply at the end of this say, hey, now, you know, let's sign on the dotted line on this contract or um, what do I need to make this sale happen? That's a call to action. Um, give me a call and let's follow up on this contract and see what we can do to make this happen. That's a call to action. And last but not least, I've kind of encapsulated all the components of the actual PowerPoint in one last um, request. Basically, I can see the effort in your PowerPoint, so I want effort there. Don't give me just a blank PowerPoint with words on it that doesn't really look attractive. 
the cohesiveness of the slides. I mean, if we have hot purple in one and bright yellow in another, if all those colors coordinate to combine to make your logo, sure, that would be okay. But if they're all over the place and you have um, slides of one type of uh, marketing campaign and then slides in another, I just want them to fit all cohesively so they look like they all belong together on the same presentation. I want them to look professional. Obviously your company should look professional and be professional um, and visually interesting. Remember, it doesn't have to be visually interesting for you. It has to be visually interesting for your customer. And your customer here is not the end user. That's the last thing I'll say again. Your customer here is a business is kind of a mediator, is another business that is selling directly to the clients. So that's what I need for your rubric for your sales presentation. In another video, I'm going to discuss uh, the actual paper portion of it. So look for that and look for videos. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks guys.